So Bezat Hashem, we're doing a little bit alachot, Ben HaMetzarim. Ben HaMetzarim, it means the period of time between Yudzaim Betamuz and Tisha B'Av. Those three weeks, those three weeks, which have 21 days, 21 days, you know why 21 days? Because, because when a chicken lays an egg, it takes 21 days to break out of the egg. Right? So it's like a period of Dam Israel is like enclosed. Enclosed. And then the 20, one, one day, day after it comes out. So this is the Geula. Okay? So they say, they say that the Ben HaMetzarim was always a period a little bit of turbulence. Hard to Am Israel. Right? Yudzayim Betamuz. Five, five hard things happened always the same date. You know that a date in the calendar has a mazal, right? Like when you speak about Chodesh Adar, right? Sheikh Nas Adam Marbim is Simcha. Right. So we speak about Av, Shechaz Av, Mematim be Simcha, right? So you see the period of time has a significance, right? So the three weeks between the Yudzayim Betamuz and Tisha B'Av, always for Am Israel, always a little bit a hard of, of a period, right? They say like the Mazal. Right, is a little bit on the on the lower level, right? It starts going up after Tisha B'Av. So therefore, he says over here, Yesh no agim shelo laaroch nisuim klal miyom yudzayim b'tamuz at Tisha B'Av. One of the first things, one of the things the Chachamim says. So since it's not such a good, significant period of time, when you want to build a house, right? When you want to start something and good a, a, a new building. You don't want to build, start building it in that period of time. Therefore, the custom is the custom is not to get married during those three weeks. Okay, during those three weeks of time, not to get married. Okay, and so is the custom by Ashkenazim. Ashkenazim during this period of time do not get married, right? And he says over here, but Sephardim, Avadia permitted them to get married till Rosh Chodesh. But the truth is. If you could avoid it, it's better. You're talking about couples which are not religious. Rosh if they're not. Rosh Chodeshav, Till Rosh Chodeshav. Oh. Till Rosh Chodeshav. From Yudzayim, you still, still can get married for Sephardim to Rosh Chodeshav. But Rav, this is Ravadi permitted. Why? According to Shuhan Aruch, he did not say it's Asu. It's an Ashkenaz cast. But again, if somebody comes to ask you, could I get married to Rosh Chodeshav? Tell me it's better not to. If it's a couple which is not so religious and they're going to make more sins by not getting married, tell them you're allowed to Tirosh Chodesh, you know? So it depends. Each rabbi would lo- Each case is going to be case per case. But as a general rule, Rav Adesef, Shuhanov did not write you're not allowed to get married after you Zayn B'Tamuz. He says, Rosh Chodesh Av. This is when it starts. Right? The custom is from the three, even the during the Yudzayim till Rosh Tisha B'Av also not to get married. Okay? And he uh, says over here, therefore, right, you don't, you try not to get married. Now, another thing to connect it with that, since it's not such an easy period of time and a good significant period of time, you would not say, So you would avoid to wear a new suit, so you don't have to say, You would avoid to eat a new fruit, so you don't have to say, right? Whatever you could avoid, Shekhyan. Now, if it's a seasonal fruit, which means it comes out to the market a week or two, and then it, you're not gonna you're not gonna find it on the market anymore. So you're gonna miss it at all. Says Ravadia, therefore we're gonna keep it for a little bit of better period of time, which is Shabbat. So during those three weeks, the Shabbatot, the three Shabbat during these three weeks, right? So you could say, if necessary, you could say the Bachar, Shekhyanu, Vikimanu, Vikyanu Azmaze. This is regarding fruits. Regarding, regarding new suits or new garments that you would say Shekhyanu, right? You would say Shekhyanu. So this could be kept for after. It's not like if you don't wear it now, unless you tell me I have nothing what to wear. You know, ladies always say, oh, I have nothing what to wear. This one I think I wore already. I cannot wear it again, right? Yeah. But you know, you know the lady, right? So you don't, you don't wear something new during this period of time. Unless, unless... It is something which is, doesn't need Shekhyan. Example, T-shirt. New T-shirt. You don't have T-shirt. It's, it's, you're sweating so much and you need a new pair of a new, uh, sets of T-shirt. 
You can buy it because there's no Shekhiyanu, right? Shoes. You can still wear shoes, new shoes, from Yudzayim Betamuz, till Rosh Chodesh Av. Basically, there's no Shekhiyanu, she could wear a word, but the custom is to stop everything Rosh Chodesh Av. The nine days. It's called the period of the nine days. Right? So, in two weeks. Two weeks, right? So, basically, you, you, you try to avoid wearing new stuff. But if necessary, you would be able to wear it. As long as it doesn't need right? Like a new shirt. Simple shirt, everyday shirt, uh, T-shirts, uh, right? Uh, socks, shoes, right? All this. But Rosh Chodesh comes in, you stop everything. Again, we are trying to avoid the bracha Shechiyanu. Look how are we going to say? Shechiyanu, Vikimanu, Vigyanu, Lazman Azeh. This is not the best period of time for Am Yisrael. No, you're not going to say Shechiyanu, Vigyanu, Lazman Azeh. Right? But when necessary, you would say it, but reserve it for Shabbat. And when not necessary, right? Even on Shabbat, you should not say it. Okay? We continue over here. It says over here, so could you get married right after Tisha B'Av? As Tisha B'Av goes out, could you marry, could get married at night? No, no. Not recommended. Not recommended. It says Ravadia said some places they used to get married right at Motzet Tisha B'Av. Right? So Yafe. But, but Motzet Tisha B'Av you're allowed already to take a shower. You're allowed already to cut your hair. So you see all the restrictions. You're allowed to listen to music. You see the restrictions come off Motzei Tisha B'Av. The only restriction that stayed, right? The only restriction that stayed was meat. So for Ashkenazim, they wouldn't eat meat after Tisha B'Av till the next day, midday, Chatzot. And Sephardim wouldn't eat the meat till the night, the next day. Right? Because they say the temple continued burning on the 10th of Av. Right? So this is the only restriction this, that stayed in al -Akhan. So therefore, he says over here, if it's a custom of the place, right? Uh, the custom of the place to get married, so let them get married. Because the restrictions are already uh, basically off. Right? Now, if not necessary, again, do not get married, Tisha B'Av. The idea is, a lot of things sometimes are permitted, but when you can avoid, avoid. This is the idea. The idea is even if we tell you, okay, it's allowed, but you tell it's not the best thing to do, right? Could you avoid it? Avoid. But not always. Now, if you're asking Allah no, but I have to do it, so tell, I will tell you yes or no, right? And then if it's yes, it's yes. So in this case, right, why would people get married to Mutzet Tisha B'Av? You know why? Because right after Tisha B'Av, all the wedding halls are booked. Everybody, it's three weeks, people didn't get married. So many people pushed the weddings for three weeks, right? So sometimes there's not even place till two, three months after. What, people are going to wait three, four months to get married, right? So some people say, okay. So Motzei Tisha B'Av. If this is your only choice and the custom is like this in your, in your country, it's okay, right? But... Don't you know how to get married? Says the Ravadia, Mutar la Soti Rusim Gamachar Rosh Chodeshav. You still allowed to do engagements, right? But, right? Without music, without dancing, just engagement. Ashkenazim call it Lechaim. Everybody gets together. Mazal Tov Lechaim. We drink together Lechaim, right? So uh, Mazal Tov for the new couple. The Chatan, the mother of the Chatan, gives a ring to the Kala, right? So this is allowed. Why? Shema Ikademenu Acher. Because sometimes, you know, they can break up. Once you're engaged, it's like an obligation already. You know, you're in the process. In the process already of getting married, right? And if not, she might see somebody else that she likes. He might see somebody else that he likes, right? Who knows what, how it's going to end up, right? And also, the Gemara says, Sometimes an outsider can see her. Oh, you're not engaged yet. When he starts to dive into Hashem, Hashem, please make it, they should break off, and I can take this girl. And believe it or not, we know that the tefillah can do a lot, and it might happen. So for this purpose, the tefillah can break this couple up, even though they're ready to get engaged, they're ready to get married. Chachamim says, it's better, it's better for us to permit them to get engaged. You know, 
that tefillah can do everything. You see, even tefillah, you see tefillah by somebody who killed somebody by mistake, right? According to the Jewish law, what does he have to do? He run, he has to run to the cities of refuge, Aremiklat, Achon. Over there, the man, and he has to stay over there. This person has to stay over there. He's not a killer, but by mistake he killed somebody, right? The Gemara says how he went up the ladder, right? He went, he went down the ladder. And by mistake, he slipped, and somebody was on the bottom. He fell on him, and killed him by mistake. He has to run to Arim Miklat, right? Now, the, the, over there, it says, he has to stay over there at Mota Kohen Gadol. Till the big priest, the Kohen Gadol, dies, he has to stay over there, right? So now, what do you think people, what those people did? Right. What? It happened by mistake. Uh, well, what? I'm going to stay? The guy is 50 years old. You know, what? Uh, who knows? He's going to go 80 years, 90 years. What? I'm going to stay here 40 years? You want to tell me? Every day is davening to Hashem. Please, Hashem, take him away. Well, I want to get out of here. Yeah? And you know, and the Gemara says Hashem might accept their prayer. So the, the, the mother of the Kohen Gadol used to come every day over there to bring the fruit. Food. Oh, you want a sandwich? You want a fruit? Oh, you need a shirt. I'll buy you a shirt. Why? They should not pray on her son. They should die. The Gemara says, look at the power of prayer. Even somebody killed by mistake. And he has to stay over there who knows how long. If he prays to Hashem, Hashem can might hear his prayer. Last week's parasha says the, say the I think it's Rav Meir, Rav Mishlan. He says, look at Bil'am, Goy. Bil'am, he prayed to Hashem, Tamot, Nafshi, Moti, Sharim. He wants to die like a Jew. And he says, look, even though the Gemara says, Elo Chelek he does not get Chelek Lamaba, still his prayer Helped him, right? That, according to the Orach Haim Hakadosh, he was reincarnated in the in the in the donkey of Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair. Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair was the father-in-law of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. So you know what's who? And, and they say this chamor, this uh, donkey was so tzaddik, wouldn't eat something which is not kosher, right? So he got this who to be. He was the donkey of uh, Bilam. Yeah. No, oh, no. Bilam himself. Reincarnated in the Daki of Rabbi Hasayim. Yeah. Why? Because of his prayer. He wants to die like a Jew, or at least serve a Jew before he dies. So to tell you, right, to tell you, by engagement, you try to do as fast as possible. You don't want to take a chance. You don't want to, um, they might break up, or somebody might pray for her, right? So let them get engaged, without music, just a mezonot, you know, a little bit of lechaim, sushi, whatever they, they serve over there, and let them, and let them make sure but Hashem, they're getting married. Now, during this period of time, three weeks, the custom is not to listen to music, any form of music. Not the radio, not CDs, not MP3s, not MP4s, not uh, whatever, WhatsApp, or M16, whatever. Huh? A cappella, we're going to see. Now, the idea is the following. Oh, we're going to get. So the idea is the following. Normally, we're not supposed to listen to music the whole year. After the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed, music is something that gives you joy. Okay, it is something joyous. It gives you joy, right? But, Chachamim saw that it's impossible. The Gemara says that uh, Ravuna, right? He says, in his city, no more music. A week, two after, they came and told him, Rabbeinu, listen, in the marketplace, they offer you, they offer you 10 chickens for a dollar and no one wants to buy. People lost the, you know, the cheshek, people lost the, 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 the desire of life. Like they live, you're living, but you don't feel doing like nothing. You don't want to go out, you don't want to see people, you don't want to talk to people, you don't want to eat, nothing. Comes Rav Chizda after Ravuna and he takes off the decree of Ravuna. He takes it off. And what happens? You would offer for one chicken a hundred dollars and they wouldn't find any to buy. You're willing to pay a hundred dollars for a chicken. Uh, people were happy. Started. And that's what they do, you know, in supermarkets. I saw it in Mexico. In supermarkets, you go in supermarkets, there's always music. In restaurants, right? Always music. Why? Because music puts you in a good mood, right? So because of that, normally, we should not have listened to music. But Chachamim saw without music, a person is lost. 
you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do anything in life, right? And you can't because then people go into depression and they need psychiatrists and psychologists and medicine and become all crazy. So they said, you know what? So during this period of the three weeks, no music. Okay. Now they came out with a new thing called a cappella. A cappella is words without music. Just they do sound effects. One guy's guitar, boom, 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 boom. The other one, so they right on the Yeah, yeah. The truth is, if you wouldn't know it's a cappella, right, you would think it's real. Some of them, not all of them, but some of them, right? But it's permitted. This is a decree that was, wasn't decreed in Chachamim. Chachamim did not decree on that, right? So therefore,